you know, arguably the three of you are probably the best motivators and speakers that we have in our century today, helping other people uh, rise to their greatness. And I think that all mentors have that as a quality in common, that they help us rise to our greatness. So I have a, one more question here for you. How do you think that Jack Boland instilled that quality in you such that you would actually create and dedicate the rest of your life to helping, mentoring, and inspiring other people. How he lived his life and toward the end, and there's this saying, judge a man not by what he does, but what he does that he doesn't have to do. And to judge the true quality of a person is what they do when no one's looking. And he didn't hide when he was going through his challenge. He showed he was an embodiment of courage and faith and being the message. There, there was a, he was a man. I, I've never known my biological father, but he to me was a man's man. He showed me how to face life heads up. And that has inspired me. I've gone through a lot of things and because of what I saw in him. I know I can handle this because Jack did, and he did it magnificently. And he's very humble in how he did it, but he did it. <laughs> Thank you, Les. Mm -hmm. Mary? Uh, there were three things, many, many things. As I mentioned, there's not a day hardly that goes by. I don't hear him in some way reminding me of who he is in my mind to me. But there were three things, one of which was that when he was talking to somebody, there would be lots of people around, but he mm -hmm. had the capacity to be 100% fully present for the however long he was with someone. There was there no, no head looking around. He was just fully present. And in that moment, you knew, no matter who it was, that you mattered. Yes. He transmitted that. The second thing was that he taught me, I told him who I, what I wanted, the work I wanted to be coming forth with and what I wanted to be and do. And he said, let me see your calendar. And I said, what? So I brought up my, my day timer in those days. And he looked and he said, this calendar is not the, per, not the calendar of a person who's doing what you say you want to do. You need to make your calendar and your checkbook reflect who you <laughs> want to be and when, write it down. Have it in your calendar and have it in your checkbook because those are the two unmistakable diaries mm -hmm. of your values, what's in your calendar and what's in your checkbook. And he completely rearranged my calendar before I left my first visit at the Church of Today. And he, uh, Wayne, I, you won't know this, but in 1987 when Jack said, I will mentor you, but it will start with you coming to Detroit and it has to be this particular weekend and um, because then I can show you what I can really do and you're gonna stay five days and shadow me and I said, well, I'll have to check with my board. And he says, then I will not mentor you because if you have to check with somebody else to be the person you want to be, you're not going to be that person. So you tell your board you're coming on this weekend and it was the weekend you were speaking. And this was in September of 1987 and it was a magical Sunday. And he said, I told you I could show you something when you can see th this level of, so the first time Wayne Dyer came and spoke at mm -hmm. Uh, the center years later or less when you came, it was an extension really of Jack's work and Jack's believing that there's something inside each one of us mm. that is powerful and ma magnificent. Our spiritual DNA is perfect and that is, Wayne mentioned the word Dharma, that every one of us is here for unique expression of that greatness. So that's what I dedicated myself to because Jack saw it in me and I saw him see it in everybody he met. Well, Mary, I, I mean, you, you are now Mary Morrissey, but at that time your name, your name was Mary Boggs. That's right. Uh, this, is, this goes back a ways. But I remember <laughs> you writing to me uh, a letter. It must have been inspired by the kind, of, kind, of, the, uh, kind yeah. of things that Jack would say. Do you remember? Do you recall that? I recall that perfectly <laughs> because I had called and, and your longtime assistant uh, described how much money it was going to cost to have you come and speak for an evening. And it was more money than I had ever even considered <laughs> that I, I could do and I but I, I I had been taught Jack had said do what you can with what you have and keep the image in mind and so I kept imagining you speaking and I what can I do well I can order some of your cassettes and listen to them and inside those cassettes I heard a story 
about you being on a plane that was leaving Florida for Chicago. It got brought back for engine problems, and you were told that there was no more flights, and you could not going to get there that night. And you said, I've got 5,000 people I'm speaking to. I won't be getting there. And they said, no, you won't. And then you looked at the woman behind the counter, and you took a breath, and you said, well, is there someone else I could speak to, like someone who doesn't believe it's impossible? And that inspired me, and I thought, oh, I could at least write a letter and put a little check in and say, if you don't think you can come for this price, can you? I talk to somebody in your office who believes it's possible. <laughs> and you wrote me back, and I have it. I still have it in my files, Wayne. You just took a big, bold black pen, and you wrote on it, you're on, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That is great. Yeah. That's called yeah. living the message. That's, that's called living the message. He didn't have no. to do that. No, he didn't have to do that. And he did it. That's yeah. called being congruent with who you are. Because who you are privately should align with who you are publicly. That's living the message, it what is. he did. Right.